Hi, I'm Noel with CreationEffects.com and this is a tutorial for Infinite Horizon. Infinite Horizon is an After Effects template uh, for turning your footage into mind-blowing perspective bending 3D scenes. Perspective bending is sort of the non-official term used to describe the manipulation of photos or videos to create unique, surreal perspectives by bending or curving a landscape. If you haven't watched the demo video, uh, go watch it now. Use the link in the description because it is really cool. It's, it's got scary music and everything. So with this template, it's easy to do. You just drop in your footage and you tell it where the horizon is. And then you can open one of the 14 presets and each one will bend your footage in a different way. You can customize the bend and the shadows and highlights and the background using the uh, controls. So it's easy to customize. And then once you've got your scene the way you want it, you can open the 3D comp and it projects your scene onto a 3D surface. I'll get into all of that later on, but what that means is you'll have a real 3D scene that you can animate your camera to move around in and uh, create some awesome 3D animations. So I'll, I'll show you how to do all of that in this video and I'll also go over the layer bender tool, uh, which is included in this template. It lets you bend or curve any layer like your footage or photo in three dimensions and uh, you can customize the bend using the controls. So this could be a great tool for any motion designer because if you're an After Effects user then you know that curving layers in 3D just isn't possible. But uh, the layer bender makes it possible. So um, I'll go over that and I'll go over the uh, kaleidoscope which can make some really cool 3D designs from your footage. All right, let's uh, dive in. I think you're gonna learn a lot about After Effects in this tutorial. This template does use a few more advanced techniques, but I'm gonna hold your hand and walk you through all of it. Um, it'll help a lot if you've worked with 3D layers and cameras before in After Effects, uh, because we'll be maneuvering 3D layers around. But um, I'm gonna save all that 3D stuff for later. First, I'm, I'm just gonna show you several different presets, uh, because there are a few differences I need to point out. But first things first, when you uh, purchase the template, you'll download this zip file. If you're on a PC, you're gonna wanna right click and look for a, an extract all option. And if you're on a Mac, you can just double click it and then open that folder that pops up and uh, you should see a couple different options. There's a 4K version and an HD version. My footage is HD, so I'm gonna open that up and uh, plus it's a little faster. Another way to access uh, the Infinite Horizon template, if you're already working in the project and you want to import the template into that project, you can just go to File, Import, and File, and uh, just select the AEP file and you can open it, and that'll put it into a, its own little folder in your project panel. Uh, just make sure that you're using 16 bits uh, for your color depth or it just won't look good. Also, a quick warning, uh, this is the latest update to 2020 and I haven't had any problems uh, with the template, but in the earlier version of 2020 it would unexpectedly crash just every couple hours. Um, but if you have that problem um, with any other future versions of After Effects, uh, just know that CC 2019 is solid and I didn't have any problems in there. So we have some instructions here to help you get started. Uh, we won't need to read those right now. Um, you can see we've got uh, our folder here with all of our presets and uh, our first step is going to be to put our footage into this comp. Put your footage here. So I'll open that up and I've already imported a number of clips here and this is what I recommend. Uh, perhaps you have a specific shot that you're, you know you want to use and that's fine. But if you have access to lots of different footage, um, I recommend you bring in multiple clips uh, because every preset is different and not every clip is going to look great with every preset. Uh, if you have lots of different kinds of shots then you can try them out and see what looks best. I've got some cityscapes here, I've got some landscapes, cloudscapes, waterscapes. Sometimes it looks best if the land is relatively smooth and even texture. Sometimes it's if, if it's a high elevation aerial shot, then that looks really good. Water tends to look really good. No matter what shot you use, it's, it's gonna make it look even cooler. And, but if the shot looks really nice, then all the better. Uh, find something with cool colors, like sunsets look really nice. If it's got a lot of atmosphere, like haze, that always looks nice. So I'm just gonna bring all of these into my Put Your Footage Here comp. 
and you don't have to do this, but I want to make it so that I can easily preview each of these shots. Um, so I'm going to make them all just five seconds long. So I'll go to the five second mark and with them all selected, I'm going to hit the alt or option key and the right bracket button at the same time to trim them. And then I'm going to right click those layers and I'll go to keyframe assistant and sequence layers and hit OK. And that's going to put them all in sequence like this. So now in my preset, I'll just be able to go five seconds forward and I can see what each preset looks like with each clip. All right, so once your footage is in, your next step is to set your horizon. Uh, so I'll unhide this horizon marker layer and this is just a shape layer with a dotted line. And you can just select that and move that so that it's over your horizon. If your horizon changes uh, throughout your shot, then you can animate this so that it tracks with the horizon line. This is an important step uh, because some presets, it won't really matter, but other presets, it requires that you set that horizon line or it, would, or it just won't look good. And uh, I'll show you the quick way to do this. Since I'm, I was constantly changing footage and testing out different shots, um, if you just leave it off and have the position property available, so I hit the P key, um, you can go to a shot and just adjust the position and you can see the line is still visible here, even though the layer is not visible. So that's the quick way to do it. All right, let's go back. We'll go back to this shot. I'll put it up here and uh, I'll close that, close my footage folder. So this other pre-comp I'll show you really quick. Uh, it's called Adjusted Horizon Pre-comp. And you won't really ever need to open this. I'll just explain what it is. It has your footage in it and it's divided into two different layers. One is above your horizon and the other is below your horizon. And this will just allow you to move your horizon up or down in your preset, which you'll see can come in handy later on. Um, you can't even see that change in this pre-comp because it's done using master properties. Um, I'm not gonna get into that, but that's just what this pre-comp is for. You won't need to ever open it or, or edit it. And I'll open the presets folder and uh, I'll open this tunnel preset. You can see we've got a main comp here and then a 3D version of that comp. Um, I'll open the main comp. You may want to set the resolution to half uh, just to make it run faster. And we can see what this looks like with different clips. So this is, a, I think, a pretty typical example of a preset and uh, I think it might be the most popular. So let's look at what's going on here. First of all, this instructions layer. Every preset will have this layer, just unhide it and you can learn about the preset. Um, it's important to read this because it might have important information. For example, uh, if you go to this dead end preset and open that up, it's probably not gonna look good. And uh, you won't really understand why until you read those instructions and then it tells you um, that this preset requires a shot where the camera looking down at a 45 degree angle. So um, that's good to know. So just read those instructions layers. And then also uh, you'll see the, a lot of information in these layer comments on each layer. So you can just widen that column and uh, expand a layer and you can read all about the layer and the effects on that layer and what it does. So your footage here, this is actually the adjusted horizon pre-comp. Um, this is the main layer and it has all the effects on there that uh, wrap it into this tunnel shape. And just to give you a basic understanding of how these presets are made, I'm gonna show you an example. Um, I'll go back to the put your footage here comp. Let's just use this shot. I'm gonna scale this down and add a few effects. Uh, I'll go to my effects and presets panel. And I'm gonna add this CC Repetile effect. So this effect is how we can expand our layer to give us more pixels to work with so that we never see the edges of our footage. So you can expand it to the right, left, down, or up, as many pixels as you want. Uh, I'm gonna expand it 960 on the right and left, so that's half the width of our footage. And we'll do 1080 on the bottom and top. That's the height of our footage. And then if we change tiling from repeat to unfold, you can see now that it's seamless. So once we've done that, we can add some kind of bend effect. For the tunnel, we use 
a polar coordinates effect. Um, so I've added that, and if we set this to rect to polar and turn this up to 100%, it wraps it 360 degrees. So that's just one method of bending the footage. Um, there's a lot of different techniques used. Um, I can show you a few others, like a, a CC bended effect. If we move this way over here and increase the bend. Oh wait, we gotta turn that off first. You can see how that bends the footage. Um, we'll turn that off and let's do uh, let's do a mirror. Um, this one can bend it at a sharp angle. So that just shows you at the most basic level how these different presets are made. Let's explore the other stuff in this template. Every preset's going to have this control layer. And if you select that and then look in your effect controls panel, you'll see all of these controls which you can use to customize this scene. Uh, if you don't see this panel, just go to window and effect controls. I'm just gonna go through all of these uh, quickly. These are pretty standard. Each preset might have some different controls, but uh, let me just explain these as quick as I can. Your bend and transform controls will allow you to customize the bend and other basic transform properties like the layer position, scale, rotation. Every preset will let you flip the footage. Uh, that'll let you turn that footage upside down before the bend effect is applied. So in this case, it turns that tunnel into this tiny planet. Um, I showed you before this adjusted horizon precomp, which moves your horizon down or up. So we can do that with this control. So if I increase that, it makes the opening of that tunnel smaller or bigger. We can twirl that. Um, our tiling control, so this will affect the CC Repetile effect. If you ever see the edges, and let me scale this tunnel down. So now we could see the edges of our tunnel, but if we extend the bottom, you can see how that expands it. Okay, so the extend top and bottom, these values are in pixels, um, which is what that CC Repetile effect uses. But for horizontal repetitions, uh, so the left and right, I did that a little differently, so you can easily make it seamless. And to get seamless tiling, all you gotta do is keep this at an odd number. So we can do five repetitions, 7, 11. You can keep going if you want. Um, eventually it's going to give you a, an error and say that the, the layer is too big. Next we've got the cropping and background controls. Um, if you turn on cropping, what that does is it crops everything above your horizon. And it looks like my horizon line is not set. And you can see how that crops everything above the horizon. Or you can reverse that, crop everything below the horizon, get some different looks, um, maybe flip the footage with that. I don't know, you can try different combinations. And you can fine tune that cropping. You can make it a little bit above the sky and then feather it out. And you can see we've already, we've got a background in here. We've got this background layer, which is also the adjusted horizon pre-comp. So you can customize that background using some of these controls. You can blur it to kind of add depth of field move it around and scale it. And then we've got this tint effect which uh, adds haze to kind of make that background look like it's far in the distance. So the idea here is, and let me turn off cropping so we can see our sky. You would use this color picker to sample the color of your, of your sky, typically right above your horizon. We'll just choose a color, turn on cropping again, and I'm gonna reset all of these. And if you increase the tint amount, you can see how the haze kind of makes it look like it's further in the distance. Next, we've got some shadow and highlight controls. So I'm going to choose a different clip so it's easier to see the shadow. This will be good. So let me increase the opacity of the shadow. We'll go all the way to 100%. We've got this lawn shadow that kind of comes into the, the opening of this tunnel. And then we've got another shadow that just kind of illuminates the opening kind of evenly all around the opening. So we've got controls here for each shadow. And you can change the light angle if you want. You probably want the light angle to match uh, the position of the light in your footage. And if you uh, select the shadow layer, and I'll hit the M key to reveal these two masks. 
This is just a solid black layer with a couple masks on it. If you select the Lawn Shadow Mask, you can see the mask is just a circle and it's programmed to match the size of the opening of your tunnel. So even if you uh, adjust your horizon position, the mask should stick. Uh, it doesn't stick if you adjust the crop, but that's okay. You can always adjust the size of that shadow manually. You can just double click one of these vertices and you can scale it like that. If you want to make that shadow longer, um, you can see that the, the feather tool was used on the shadow. So if you want, you can edit it that way. Uh, just use this mask feather tool. You can kind of fine tune the feathering that way. The shadows are, are made differently in each preset. So you really just got to read the instructions. Uh, sometimes it's really straightforward. Other times you might have to edit a mask, but I've tried to make it as simple as possible. Uh, another quick tip, if you want to switch out that background layer, this is a tip that every After Effects user should know. Um, if you select the background layer and uh, let's say you want to swap it out with another clip, you have the layer selected and the clip selected in your project panel and then just hold down the Alt or Option key and drag that clip from the project panel right onto the layer. And that swaps out the source of this layer, but it preserves all of the effects and the expressions on that layer. So now you'll still be able to control that background using these uh, background controls. Another thing I'll show you here is this optional effects layer. You can unhide these to see what they do. Um, optics compensation is a really good one. This one will let you create that look of flying through your tunnel. So if I turn that up, you can see it actually has pretty good results. We've also got uh, some different lighting effects or you can add some haze. I use the glow effect all the time with these presets. It just makes the light pop and adds a really nice look to it. Um, CC Force Motion Blur, the standard comp motion blur isn't going to work with these presets. So if you have any fast motion in, in your animation, um, you can use this effect to add some motion blur. So I, I mentioned convergence. Um, you can see it clearly in this example. You've got uh, the ends of your, your footage converging and it doesn't really look very good. Sometimes it's kind of unavoidable. Um, you could just scale it up, scale up your tunnel so that you don't see these edges. Or you can get a little creative. Um, if you look at your footage layer here, you've got these two hidden effects here. Um, these are circle effects. They, they basically let you crop the outer edge or the inner edge in the shape of a circle. So especially with this tunnel preset, uh, these can come in handy. If you want to just turn that on, that crops out uh, that part of the tunnel. So what you could do is then duplicate your footage layer and uh, on the, the bottom one, you can just scale it up. Let's look at another example. This one is the wall curved preset. You can make it curve up or down or you can move the bend so that it curves the other side. Um, this one is actually using a photo, and I did that just to show you um, a tip. Uh, but first, this horizon is, is too high, so let me go back to the footage comp and just bring that horizon. And actually, I want to curl this down here where the land is, so below the horizon. So you can see what that did. So the thing I wanted to show you, if you're using a photo, you can add some movement to this to make it look less like a photo and more like footage. So specifically, you can look for the skew from horizon control. If I start turning this up, you can see what that does. It skews it from the horizon line and basically makes it look like the camera is tracking to the side. So that's one way to add movement. You could try some of these other controls as well. Um, or in the 3D comp, you'll see how we can animate the camera and add movement that way. Let's look at another one. Let's open up this donut preset. So you might notice there's no 3D version of this comp. Um, if there isn't a 3D comp, that means the 3D effects are built into that main comp. So you can see here in the main comp, we've got a camera layer and uh, we've got some map layers. Uh, first, let me just show you how this works. Anytime you see a camera layer, that means you can just move that camera to see the 3D effect. So the best way to do that is to use the, the camera move tools. 
Um, you can just hit the C key on your keyboard. And uh, I just updated After Effects and they, they changed all of these, which probably means my instructions on using the camera and all of my templates are wrong now. Thanks, Adobe. Whenever they change something, I get all upset. Like, how dare they? Anyway, it's probably a good change. Um, but I'm not really sure how these work yet, so I might embarrass myself. But I guess we'll orbit around the camera point of view. Just click and drag on the scene, and you can kind of see how it takes the form of a, a 3D donut. So what's going on here? How is it doing that? Well, if we look at this optional effects layer, you can see it's got this displacement map effect. The displacement map effect will warp your image. It just shifts pixels and it uses a map to determine which pixels to shift and how much to shift them. So if we look at this displacement map and I'll solo it, it's got this gradient. Uh, it's the shape of our donut. White pixels are displaced the most and 50% gray pixels are not displaced at all. So that means this area here along the white is going to be shifting the most. And the amount of displacement is linked to the position of the camera. So if we move that camera, we're just turning up the displacement. Now, you can't just orbit your camera all the way around and, and look at this from the side or from behind, because if you go too far, you can see it gets all distorted and it doesn't look good. This is really uh, just designed to be a subtle effect. So you can just move it around in small amounts. And you can see that the 3D background is, is shifting around as if we were looking at this in 3D. But um, you could also turn off cropping and we'll extend the bottom and we'll see what that looks like. So that's kind of a different look. Now, since the amount that you move the camera is linked to the amount of displacement, um, to get rid of all of that displacement, you just have to move your camera back to the center. So to do that, you just open up the camera and you can hit reset. If I go to my control layer and scroll down, you can see we've got some uh, displacement controls here. So you can uh, increase the amount of displacement. Um, basically all that does, if you turn that up, now you can move your camera less, but it's still going to displace the same way. So now that I'm moving my camera less, the background isn't shifting around as much. Also down here, we've got a blur map. And if we unhide that, basically the same thing, except instead of 50% gray, it goes to black. So white pixels are blurred the most. Black pixels are not blurred at all. And uh, the blurring is all done. Again, on the optional effects layer, we've got this camera lens blur. And again, we can customize the blur on the control layer with these depth of field controls. So you can see uh, it's already blurred a little bit, but let's crank it up. So now you can see right around here, the area that's closest to the camera is in focus and all other areas are out of focus. You can change the focal distance and kind of shift where the focus is. So that's how the 3D effect is achieved in, in just a few of the presets. Uh, I should also maybe open up one of these maps. I'll just explain this really quick. So we've got this gradient in here from 50% gray to white. And the start of the gradient is wherever your horizon is. So remember, white pixels are displaced the most. So the bottom of your footage is what's going to be displaced the most. This gradient layer, which has that gradient effect here, also has all of the same effects that uh, your footage layer has. So this layer with the gradient that is in the same position as your, your land has all those same effects and is wrapped around in the exact same way as your footage. So back in your donut comp, this, these maps should always conform to the shape of your donut, no matter what changes you make on the control layer here. That might be more information than you need, but some people are curious how this stuff works. So let me close all that. Uh, I'll close donut. All right, next I want to go over these optional precomps folders because these are in every preset. Um, if I open that up, you can see we've got some another put your footage here comp, another adjusted horizon precomp, and the displacement map that you saw in that donut comp is here as well. So these are here in case you want to use different footage in this preset because currently all of these presets use the same pre-comp for your footage here in the same adjusted horizon pre-comp. So there might be a situation where you want to put different footage in different pre-comps. 
And you can use these to do that. So let me open up this pre-comp and I'll put some different footage in. I'll put this greenhouse in there and all right. And then the way that we apply that is we'll open up our donut comp and we need to figure out which of these layers are the adjusted horizon pre-comp, this pre-comp here. So we can do that by changing this from layer name to source name. Now we can see the source of all of these layers. And we can see that these two layers here are the adjusted horizon pre-comp. So we can select those and we'll use that same technique that I showed you earlier for switching out the background. We'll use that here and just switch out these layers with this pre-comp. So we'll select the layers, select this pre-comp here, hold down the Alt or Option key and drag it onto the layers. And now these layers are linked to this pre-comp instead of this pre-comp. And we can't see it. Let me open up the put your footage here comp. Okay, so it's just in the first 10 seconds. So uh, we'll go back to here and we'll just go to the beginning. And here it is. So this could be handy if you want to composite different presets together. I'll just hide the background layer. I'll go back here and I'll put, open up my tunnel comp. And I could put my donut comp in there. The depth of field doesn't match or anything, but you get the idea. And you can uh, have different presets, composite them together in creative ways, and they can all use different footage. And let me show you something else too, because you might want to use, make duplicate copies of this donut comp. And if you do that, you'll probably want different pre-comps for each donut comp. So you can just take this whole folder and duplicate it, Command D or Control D, and then you can do that same trick again to swap out the adjusted horizon pre-comps in your new donut comp. But there's an extra step here because this adjusted horizon pre-comp that you duplicated still has these put your footage here pre-comps from here, from the original folder. We want to switch it with this new one that we made. So uh, we'll do the alt drag thing, select those layers, select our new Put your footage here pre-comp, drag it onto there. All right, let's go over the 3D comps. Uh, this is the fun stuff. I'm going to open the inverted comp because this is probably the most simple example. And it's going to take some practice to do this, so I'll, I'm going to show you several examples. But let's just start with this. I'll open up the, the main comp first. And let's find a different clip. Sure, we can use this one. I'm going to separate the landscapes just a little bit, about like that. Okay, I'll close that and let me open the 3D comp, inverted 3D. And at first it looks exactly the same. But if we move the camera, we can see now that our inverted landscape is, is sort of bent into this 3D shape. So what's going on here? I uh, actually have this little diagram to show you. So let's open that up. And this is totally ridiculous. I thought I would do like this little diagram with a simple triangle for the light and a little square for the film strip and then another square here. So I, I started doing that and then this was the result. And I spent way too long on it. And I should mention that this little diagram here is not my idea. I saw this in several different tutorials. Um, I don't know who started it, but it was just so good I had to use it. Um, it really explains what's going on. Anyway, this is called projection mapping. It's a technique used even in the biggest Hollywood blockbusters to get a 3D look from a 2D image. You can see we've got three different elements in here. We have a light source, and we have an image represented by this little film strip, and then we have a projection screen, um, which is can take the, the shape of this 3D geometry here. So it's basically like a movie theater, and uh, the light source would be in the camera and it's projecting light through the film strip and it's projecting that image onto a screen. Um, the main difference though is the screen is, is a 3D shape and that's what's going to let us move our camera around and make our landscape look like it's in 3D. Back in our inverted 3D comp, uh, let me go to a right view. So right now it's we're seeing what our camera sees, but I'll turn this to right and now we are seeing a side view and I I don't know why I can't zoom out Adobe changed the zoom tool I can't use my option I don't know 
that's annoying. All right, but we're looking at this from the side view and our camera is here pointed this way. So our camera is in front of the scene and also in the exact same position as our camera is the spotlight. Let me unlock those. So these are locked um, just so that you don't try and edit them. Uh, you can unlock them if you want, but you don't want to move your footage layer. So let me zoom in. So again, we've got our light layer and the light layer is projecting light this way forward. And then right in front of the light layer is our footage right here. So just like our film strip, our footage has been made very small and it's right in front of the, the light layer. If we bring up the scale property, you can see it's only at 3%. If you even change this to like 4%, your landscape would look huge in your camera view. So just leave this layer alone, leave the light layer alone. You can move the camera if you want. Um, let me zoom out. And then also um, we have our projection screen, which in this preset is these three layers. So we've got the back wall right here. We've got a floor and we've got a ceiling. And the floor and the ceiling come way out, all the way to the camera. So let's look at those from a different view. And we'll go back to camera view. And I'm gonna select the control layer and then I'm going to turn on projection screen preview mode. And when you do that, it uh, reveals this grid that is on each of these layers here. And uh, you can also see your footage through that. And if you would like to see the grid more, you can turn up the grid opacity or turn it down, or you can turn up your footage opacity. We need to be able to see both the grid and your footage because we have to line up this projection screen with your footage. The screen is probably not going to be lined up with your landscape automatically because each clip is different. Your clip is gonna have a different horizon line than what this comp is set up for. So the way that we line up this screen with our inverted landscape here is through this layer that says screen control layer. So every 3D comp is going to have a, a screen control layer. And the other screen layers are going to be parented to this control layer, and you can see that here. If you don't know about parenting, um, you might want to look that up, but basically they're connected to this layer so that any changes you, you make to this layer, if you move it or rotate it, these other layers are going to go with it. So that's how we're going to line it up. We're going to just adjust a couple different properties. Like I said, this one is pretty easy. All we need to do is bring the floor up and the ceiling down, and we should try and do that using only the screen control layer. You could move these layers individually, but you might also be making changes to the screen that you don't want to make that um, it's hard to see. So try and do it with just the control layer. I'm, I hit the S key to bring up the scale property, and let's just scale it on the Y axis. And that should do it. You can see it lines up with our horizon line here. Um, if you wanted to, if you felt like this grid doesn't really match the perspective of your ground or the ground up here, then you could always edit these layers individually. You can see if I select the floor, uh, the anchor point is way back here at the same position as the wall. So I've put the anchor point in, in a position that makes sense for you to edit it. So now you can just open up the rotation property and uh, it might not be obvious which one you have to to adjust, but you can just play with them to see. And I can bring this down like this if I wanted to. So I just move that 10 degrees. Let me do the same thing with the ceiling. I'll rotate it in the opposite direction, 10 degrees. Okay, so now I can turn off preview mode and um, I'm gonna keep hitting my C key to bring up this little icon. This is like the dolly in or dolly out. It moves your camera forward or backward. And I'll drag on my scene, and now it's like we're moving through our 3D landscape. Now something happens here. If I go too far out, you can see the edges of your footage. And we don't want that. Also, if I rotate it, we can see the edges here. So that's not good at all. So what you need to remember to do before you ever use your 3D comp, I'm gonna go back to our, our main comp, you should increase the resolution of your main comp by at least 50%. And that's gonna give you extra room in your 3D comp to move your camera around so that you don't see your edges. So in your main comp, you can go to Composition, Composition Settings, 
and uh, you can see the width and height here. I'm going to lock the aspect ratio, so I only have to change one of these, and uh, I can just do the math right in here. I'll do 1920, which is our current width, and I'll do times 1.5 to increase the resolution 50%. So our comp is a little bit bigger now. If you do that, uh, you can go more than 50% if you want. Um, if you do and you see the edges of your footage, just remember you can always extend your footage using the tiling controls on the control layer. All right, now I'll go back to the 3D comp and I'll dolly out a little bit and you can see that gave us some more room. Um, you can look up other tutorials on projection mapping. Uh, it's also called camera mapping and, and learn more and it might help you with this in this template. Just real quick, there's a, a few things maybe you should know. These screen layers, I'll open up the material settings. I'll expand it and uh, you've got your material options in here. These have very specific settings. Um, they have to be set a certain way in order for your image to be projected onto them. Likewise, your spotlight has specific settings. It has to have cast shadows enabled. It has to be a spotlight. And your footage has specific settings. So this has to be cast shadows only and light transmission at 100%. So just keep that in mind. You can't just add a solid layer to this comp and expect your image to be projected onto it. All right, I'm going to open up a different preset. I'll open up this drop off corner comp. So with this one, uh, we've got this foreground layer here, which is totally optional. You can turn that off if you want. And uh, of course, we can change the position of the bend or the angle of the bend. If you turn that angle all the way around, you can bring the bend to the other side. All right, so uh, before we go to our 3D comp, remember we have to increase the resolution of this comp. So you can go to your uh, composition settings or just do Command or Control K, and that brings up the panel, and we'll just do times two. I'll open up my 3D comp, and let me move the camera so you can see that's way off. We have, we've got some work to do here. Let me go into preview mode, and we can see where our screen is. So we have to uh, move where that bend is here. We have to move this wall this way maybe adjust where the horizon is here. So remember, uh, we need to try and do that using the control layer. And uh, you can edit the properties. I'm actually going to try this thing. I've never used this before. It's kind of just like a, a 3D program. Okay, and uh, we'll move this up a little bit. All right, that's close enough. Um, uh, we do have to change the angle of the bend on this layer. Um, so that's down here. That's the uh, the drop-off wall. Our anchor point is in the right spot, so we can just, uh, we should be able to just do this. Okay, close enough. And then our foreground layer, we'll select the foreground. It's already positioned perfectly to be level with this ground layer, so um, we just need to push it back and then rotate it. So, and, and just remember, it's not just rotation and position, but remember, you can stretch the screen out um, by adjusting the scale. Just unlock this, and you can stretch it out in any dimension. If you scale it out in Z space, that'll actually push that, uh, that back wall backward with it. All right, so that's looking pretty good. I'll turn off preview mode, and we should be able to move our camera. Can see the edges. We, we could get rid of that if we increase the resolution a little bit more. Um, but here's a problem. This is a double projection and you could also see it, I'm sure, if we move the camera forward. Here it is down here. So what's happening? Let me reset that uh, camera. So we're in our default position. We have our screen layers and our image is being projected onto those screen layers, but our foreground isn't just being projected onto this foreground screen layer, it's also being projected past that. So onto this back wall, onto this side wall here, those also have that foreground. So that means if you move the camera forward, you're going to see that double projection. Um, there's no way around that 
So if you wanted to, for like in this example, if you wanted to move that camera forward, you would actually have to move it back first. And then this would be your starting point. You would add a keyframe, move forward, and then end your animation before you go too far forward. But uh, I shouldn't say there is no fix. If it, There is a fix. If you remove that screen layer that's behind, you won't see that double projection. So you can just go back here and hide the back wall. And you can see there's another background in this comp. We've got this background layer here. And it's 3D. We can just use this if we want to. And we don't have to worry about any double projection on this background. And actually, I... In most presets, I recommend that you hide the back wall because if I move my camera around the background layer, you could see there's some separation between that background and the foreground. Okay, uh, moving right along. Moving right along. Do you guys ever watch that? The Muppet, the Muppet movie? No? Okay, never mind. My kids have been watching that. Um, I'll close the drop-off corner. Let's look at this one. So far, we've looked at some pretty easy examples. It gets a little bit more complicated. So let's open up this comp, drop off curved. And uh, we can find a different clip just for fun. Sure, we can do clouds. Okay, we've got this weird right wall here, which I left that in there because, I don't know, someone might want that, but I don't really like it. So we'll just turn down the extend top. And uh, let's, uh, let's change the bend up a little bit. If we select the bend and transform controls, um, then we can see these two little crosshairs. And we can uh, adjust the width of the bend and the amount of the bend. You can see this highlight moves with the footage as we bend it. Um, but it's, it's going a little bit too far now, but we can fix that. We've got some highlight controls down here. Maybe we'll widen it. Okay, and we'll uh, increase the resolution times two. And that's fine. I don't expect to use all of that space. Um, we'll just open the 3D comp. And let's take a look at our screen. So you can see it matches more what the uh, default bend looked like in our pre-comp. But if you're an After Effects user, you're probably noticing something unusual about this. We've got this, we've got a bend. We've got like a, a real 3D curve here. And um, these screen layers are just solid white layers. And normally you can't bend solid white layers in, in three dimensions. That brings us to the layer bender. The layer bender is this little thing I made for this template because I needed to be able to bend stuff. So let's take a look at this. Um, if I open up this bent footage folder and I'll open up the your bent footage comp here and I'll hide the instructions layer and you can see all this comp is is just this layer that's bent and um, if you select the control layer and look in the effect controls you can see all the different options you have to customize that bend. So you saw all of that probably in the demo. I'm going to actually go through all of these because you're going to need to be pretty comfortable with this layer bender if you want to be able to adjust those curved screens to match your landscape. So first, uh, how it works. Um, I kind of lied to you. It's just a little white lie. I, uh, I said it was you're, you're bending a layer. And really, as you can see, we've got a whole bunch of layers here. So that's the trick. Um, if, you put, if you open up this pre-comp here, we do just have one layer in here, and you can swap this out with whatever you want. You could put a photo in here, or um, a solid layer, or a pre-comp if you want. And then in this comp, it's going to divide whatever you put in here. It's going to divide it up into lots of different layers. Um, if we just solo one of these, you can see this is just a, a sliver, a narrow segment. And with a bunch of these put together, you can see that uh, they're each rotated just slightly. And on either end of all of these little segments, we've got a lawn segment. So that's this segment one layer. And then if you go to the end, we have this segment end layer. And in between that segment one and, and the segment end, we've got all those narrow segments that are making up the bend. So on the control layer in these bend controls, you can uh, of course adjust the amount of bend. 
Um, you can adjust the, where the bend starts. You can adjust how wide each of those segments are. So right now they're 2%. So each of those segments are 2% of the total width of this layer. So if you brought this down to something like 0 0.5, now we've got a much sharper bend. Or you can go higher and you've got like a much more gentle slope. Um, gap control, you probably won't see any um, gaps between the segments, but if you do, you can turn this up a little bit. Uh, right now it's just set to one pixel. Um, you can change the orientation of the bend. So right now it's from the left, which is one. You can choose any number from one through four. So two would be from this side. And uh, uh, maybe you want the uh, this first section to be much longer. You can you can stretch it out by going like this. And I mean, if this is footage, you probably don't want to do that because it distorts everything. But um, for a screen where it's all just white, that could come in really handy. And likewise, you can do the same with the end segment. You can stretch that out too. And these last controls, you can just ignore those. Um, and I didn't show you this incremental bend. What that does, it makes each of these segments rotate a little bit more the, uh, the further down the layer is in the layer order. So you can create some interesting bends that way. You could, uh, if you have the bend angle set really low and the incremental bend really high, you can curl stuff. You could even make it into a spiral shape. So that could be good for making like a flying carpet or a sled or something. And uh, I should also explain each of these segments are parented to the segment above it. That's how they stay all connected. And um, ultimately they're all parented to this control layer. So just like with the screen, if you move that control layer, you move the entire layer bender. And you can rotate it in three dimensions and position it wherever you want. There's this instructions comp here. If you open that up, here you'll find uh, detailed instructions on how to do a whole bunch of different stuff. You've got a bunch of how-tos here. Um, I should go over just a, a couple of these, I think. Uh, first, increasing the bend resolution. Let me go back. So if you uh, increase the bend, I don't know if you'll see it, but especially if the segments are wider, um, you'll be able to start to see the individual segments. I mean, you'll see straight lines. It won't be a totally smooth curve. But if you want, you can increase the resolution of the bend just by adding more segments. And it's not that hard. Um, it tells you how to do it in those instructions. And uh, I think it tells you how to do it. Actually, it tells you right here. So you set the bend angle to zero and then you duplicate the middle segments. Um, you can grab multiple segments like this. It doesn't matter which ones and then just duplicate them, Command or Control D. And then you move those down to the bottom but not past the segment end layer. It has to come before it. Rearrange them to 16, 17, 18. And now each of these segments have to be parented to the one above it. So the easiest way to do that is just drag this little icon here. And then do that segment end to. You can see which layer the layer is parented to in here. So just make sure they're all, these numbers should be in order, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, so we just increased the resolution a little bit, but you can see the layer still looks the same. If you wanted to uh, copy this into another comp, all you have to do, select that segment one layer and then shift select the segment end layer and be sure to do it in that order. And then you can copy them and you can go to another la another comp and paste them. And uh, if you wanted to have more than one layer bender in a comp, because you could string these together and create this a continuation of different bends. Um, so to do that, you would need to uh, just rename a couple layers before you copy and paste them. Um, for that first one that you copied and pasted, you don't need to rename anything. But the second time you do it, you have to rename the segment one layer. So what you could do is just make this two. And that updates all the expressions on these layers. And we'll make this segment end two. And then we'll do that copy and paste again. Um, if you go back to our layer bender folder, we also have this bent screen comp in here. So this layer bender, I mean, it's the same as the other one, except there's no pre-comp. Um, these are all just solid layers. And they have that grid effect on them. Um, so these are all set up to be your, your projection screen. So if you ever screw up your projection screen in one of the presets, um, beyond repair, you can just come in here 
and copy this layer bender and paste it into your uh, preset. All right, now that we're all experts in layer bender, uh, let's go back to our drop off curved 3D comp and let's try and match this bend. Uh, first of all, we can take out this wall here because we, we removed that wall in the, uh, the pre comp. So I'll scroll down. Here it is, right wall. We'll just hide that. I probably wouldn't want to use my back wall either, but I'm going to keep it on for now because it's easier to see the projection if that back wall is on. So let's look for the, uh, the screen control layer. You can see this is segment one of our layer bender. We'll probably want to reposition it, uh, but let's try and fix the bend first. So remember to get a wider bend, we can increase the width of the segments. So let's try like 2.5, maybe 3.5. Now I'm worried that uh, our bend is so wide now that there's nothing left of that segment end layer. So what we can do is start our bend earlier. Adjust this bend start. Let's make it like 20%. So 20% from the edge here is where the bend is going to start. And now we can see we've got plenty of segment end screen here. Um, but we will need to stretch this part out. So we'll increase the scale beginning too much. Something like that. And uh, also you'll notice that this the grid continues on this way. Even though you can see the end of the layer is right here. Um, that's because we've got, uh, on this layer, we've got a CC Repetile effect. If I turn that off, you can see where the, the edge of the actual layer is. So that's helpful. Okay, I, I think I need to widen that bend a little bit more. Let's just make it 4.5, and we'll just make that work. Now, since this is 3D, uh, things in the distance are smaller. So the bend in the distance is much smaller than the bend here, or much narrower. And it's not really like that in our pre-comp, just because of the, the nature of the bend effect that we used. So we can kind of minimize that effect if we, uh, if we rotate. So we've got our control layer, and let's just rotate the entire layer bender. So now we're looking at it at the bend a little more straight on, so we don't have as much of that small bend in the background, big bend in the foreground. So now we can move this down so that the horizon line matches and move this over. And our, our bend angle is, is wrong, but we can fix that easily. And we need to stretch out that segment end. I'll just do like 600%, even more. We'll just do 2000, go nuts. All right, that's pretty close. If you uh, bring the screen down a little bit further, so now some of those clouds are being projected onto that back wall. And uh, if we remove the wall now, that gives us a clean crop here. We don't see any of the screen. Uh, we just need to uh, turn off preview mode to hide our screen. And that should do it. Now we can orbit our camera around. You can see we can go all the way to the other side of our bend. And we ran out of background here, but you could fix that in the background controls. Uh, you could scale it up. Or you could just uh, select that background layer and increase the tiling with this effect. So that, that's your intro to the curved screen. Well, I'm just going to look at one more example now. It does not get any more complicated than this example, but let's open this funnel. Uh, when you first open the funnel, the main comp, it's exactly like the tunnel comp that we saw earlier. Really, the only difference is in the 3D screen in this comp. Let me just increase the resolution. And we'll open that 3D comp. If we look at the screen, you can see we've got this, uh, this tunnel here made with our layer bender, and that's the edge of it. So what we're seeing here is actually the background. So it, I'm trying to orbit the camera and it's not working, and that's because when you're in preview mode, screen preview mode, the camera's position is locked, and that's for good reason. But uh, we can um, turn that off just for now. If we go to the position property, I'm just going to turn off the expression on the position property. I'll click that little equal sign. Um, and, and that's a good tip. If, if ever you want to adjust a control manually, maybe like the expression on there is 
is causing it to do something you don't want to do. You can always just turn off the expression. I don't think it's going to break anything. It's All right, so now we can zoom out. All right, so now you're starting to see this funnel take shape here. Um, just a, a quick note about this preset. Um, if you're going to look at it from an angle like this, and I, I did this with the uh, that whirlpool shot that you saw in the demo video, you're going to want to use footage with a, a top view, so the camera looking straight down. That's probably what's going to work best for that. But So this layer bender, uh, you might be wondering how I got this shape with a layer bender. It says actually multiple layer benders string together. So if we look here, each of these control layers um, control this group of layers here. This is a layer bender here. You can see it only has seven segments, and we got lots of those. If we open up one of these pre-comps, you can see we've got a solid layer in here, and it's an unusual shape. I just used a mask to get this shape. So with this shape and multiple layer benders string together, we can get this funnel shape. Now it's possible you might want to expand this outer edge. So normally, if you remember, you could use that uh, control, um, but we've got all these different layer benders. You probably don't want to do that for each one. So what I did is I just created this screen control layer here, and this is kind of like the master control layer. So it controls all of these other control layers. So just select that, and then we can do scale end. And that's stretched out the end. But you can see we've got a problem here uh, with these gaps. So that, it, you could actually fix, fix that manually. If you go to one of these segment end layers, so I've got this one selected now. I'll hit the S key, and let's just widen it about that much. And now you could select that scale property, copy it, and then select all these other segment end layers and just paste that property to those other layers and you can see what that did. Okay, we're, we're nearing the end, kind of. Let me go over this kaleidoscope first. And there's two options in here. Let's go over the simple one first. We've got our main footage layer here and then a background layer. Uh, if we go to our control layer, we've got some kaleidoscope controls here. And this evolution property is the main control which changes the pattern of the kaleidoscope. We could probably find a better clip than that. Yeah, that's a good one. Random seed, you can change that and it'll create entirely new patterns. Um, the amount of change, if you lower this, your footage might be a little bit more recognizable. Um, and then also you could turn down the tiling. Like We've got seven repetitions here, but if we crank that down to three or something, you're going to start to uh, recognize the elements in your footage a little easier. Um, I like it really high. So all these bend and transform controls are going to change the pattern in different ways. And I mean, there's really an infinite number of possibilities here. You just got to play with the controls and figure out what you like. Um, cropping is turned on, but you could turn that off and then you won't see that background behind you. See, that's that's just beautiful. I love this uh, this effect. You put some titles over that and it's going to look really cool. Let's look at that uh, Your Footage layer again. So we've got all of these optional effects here. And um, you don't have to, but you can always turn on any of these effects and uh, see what they do. Um, this CC Split effect just makes a little opening, a little hole in your footage. But with these other effects, the Repetile and the Polar Coordinates, that actually turns into a whole bunch of different holes. And then you can always go into these effects and uh, you can change the properties inside of them and it's going to change the pattern. So you can animate these, uh, keyframe them. And uh, I mean, if you want to take this to the next level, you can always enable 3D for this layer. And uh, then you can duplicate this layer a few times if you want. And then each layer you can push back further in Z space. So you can see how it's creating multiple copies that go further and further back. And then if you added a camera to this, now you can move your camera and uh, look at this in three dimensions. This is the more complicated version. I created this one first, and I thought it was it might be a little 
too much, too much work for some people. So then I created this, uh, the idea being that all you really had to do was animate this evolution property. Um, yeah, you can play with these other effects if you want to, those optional effects. But this one has just an easy way to change the pattern, just a single control. For this one, we don't have the, that control. Um, we do have all of those optional effects here. You're probably going to want to choose at least one of them, because um, without it, this is this is really just a tunnel, just like the tunnel preset. Um, but if you want some kind of kaleidoscope effect, um, you got to unhide some of these. And you can animate their properties, of course, and, and change the pattern. Um, the thing that's special about this comp is it has the camera layer in there, and it also has these map layers. Uh, you remember these, displacement map and blur map. So uh, this comp has depth of field blurring and that 3D displacement that we looked at earlier. So we can orbit the camera, and I don't know how this is going to look, but it looks kind of weird. Oh, and I've, I didn't even show you. That's the reason it wasn't working very well. Um, what you need to do, because let's look at this displacement map, for example. I'll solo that. So uh, the gradient on here needs to match the pattern in your kaleidoscope. And right now it currently does not. Um, so what you got to do, when you unhide layers here, and if you adjust any of the properties... So I'll make that opening bigger. Okay, so I'm just going to make note that I, I changed this point A property on the CC split effect. And, uh, I mean, we could remember these numbers, but it's probably easier to go down here, open the CC split effect, and I'll select point A and I'll copy it. And now I'm going to open up my displacement map. We've got our gradient. Um, I showed you that earlier. But uh, on the gradient, you can see we've got all the same effects, all of these optional effects that are on our main footage layer in the other comp. So any changes that we make to those effects in here have to be made in the pre-comp. Uh, it won't make those changes automatically. So you'll have to open the pre-comp, and you go in here, and I'll open this... I'll select the CC split effect and I'll just paste and turn it on. So what that did is it pasted the point A property to here and now this matches and uh, we've got soft edges. We need that or it's going to produce some crappy results. And then again on our control layer we have displacement controls where we can adjust the amount of displacement. So if we move our camera a little bit now we're going to get that parallax effect. Parallax, uh, that just means that some areas are going to be moving more than other areas, and in doing so, it creates this kind of 3D look. We could turn up the blur amount, and that, that really adds a sense of depth to it. Okay, that's... Uh, I'm tired. I'm just going to end with some final tips for you and then release you guys to go out and, and make something amazing. So let me, uh, let me see, what's, what's a good preset? I'm going to go to this tiny planet. Okay, so it looks like our horizon line is right. Let's open that up just to make sure. Nope, not even close. I'll put that up here. I'll just put it right there. And turn on cropping. All right, so you can see here we've got a problem. We've, let me bring this up. All right, so the cropping happens at our horizon, but our footage has elements that go above the horizon. And there are going to be times where you're going to want to see those elements. It might be mountains or buildings or a tree or something. So cropping isn't going to really help you do that. So what you can do is, is actually remove your sky in the Put Your Footage Here pre-comp. And there are a number of ways you can do that. You could try and key it out with a color key effect or something. Um, I'm, no, I'm not very good at that. Um, you could use the, uh, the rotoscope brush tool. That one's really powerful, and if you've got the hang of it, it can, it can be really good. But uh, um, I'm more old school. I just draw a mask. So you can use your pen tool, and you would go above these buildings like this. And then you could reveal the mask, and uh, you could uh, 
Control click that mask and you can do track mask. Move your playhead to the right spot and then you can just hit play. And it'll go through and track the mask. I would look up a tutorial on, on the track mask if that's what you want to do. But that would be a, an easy way to remove that sky. And then if you go back to your preset, and now we could turn off cropping. And you can see that preserves these elements that go above the horizon. I want to show you something else in the uh, tunnel comp. And let me show you the original clip. And play it back. The camera is moving to the side. It's tracking sideways. So in our tunnel comp, we should be able to get a cool effect with the clouds all moving in the same direction around the tunnel. But if we play that back, you can see that that's really not what's happening. You can see in certain places it's converging. And maybe you like that, but I really don't. So let me show you a way to fix that. Um, on your footage layer, I'll open the CC Repetile effect. And actually, I'm going to do it down here in the timeline. You can see we've got, we're using this unfold method for tiling. And that's great for down and up, the top and bottom. But on the right and left sides, we actually want to use the repeat. So what we could do is for this effect, we're going to turn off the expressions for the down and up. So this one will just be the right and left, and we'll make this repeat. And then we'll duplicate that effect. And this one will be unfold. And uh, we'll turn on the expressions for down and up. And we'll turn off the expressions for left and right. So now we got two different re repetile effects. And uh, we can see the edges. It's, this footage isn't meant to be tiled, but we can blend the borders a little bit. And that should look pretty good. That's actually, I mean, an identical effect to uh, this reverse twirl. So even if you had a photo, you could create that effect with this control. Okay, uh, another piece of advice I want to give you. I recommend thinking about something that you can overlay over your shot. It might be just floating particles, or it might be um, birds. On one of my shots, I used birds from my, from the flocks template from Creation Effect. Or it, it could just be like a, a lens flare or a haze or something. But I think if you overlay something like that, it really does a lot to kind of unify the whole shot, all the different elements, and just make it look like they belong together. Um, that's everything I wanted to go over with you. So again, try lots of different clips. Bring as much footage as you can into the template and just experiment, see what looks good. I really only used landscape footage, but I feel like I might have just scratched the surface. I, I didn't really test it with any other kind of footage like people or I don't know what else, but um, it's possible that something else might look really good. So experiment, go make something cool. As always, I'd love to see what you make. Uh, send me a, a link and I'll share it on social media. Thanks for watching. And if you like cool effects like this, be sure to check out the other stuff at creationeffects.com. I just finished a micro, which is for creating microscopic animations, custom flocks of birds, swarms of insects, or schools of fish, and 3D books. And there's a number of animal templates. So you can put lions or wolves or elephants into your videos and you can make them jump or run or roar or whatever you want to do to them. There's uh, VHS effects or glitch effects or old film effects. There's custom 3D oceans. There's a cool particle trails effect and an artifacts template that has over 40 different art effects for your footage.